When it comes time to updating your BIOS and it comes time to kind of taking off the final portion of your build here, you have to know which port you are connecting to. You have to have the right kind of USB. You have to follow the right process. And there's actually two competing processes now. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to update your BIOS using both the old school method, which does require going into the BIOS itself, and the newer method, which I think is a little bit easier, but a lot of people get confused about, which is called the flashback BIOS method. Both of these ways require that right there, a USB drive. And there's some very specific things that this drive has to have in order for you to be successful. And this right here is the stumbling block that a lot of people have. So let's talk about this. First, take note, this is a USB 2.0 thumb drive. It does not have blue, red, green, it doesn't have any of those on the actual USB portion itself. It is white, sometimes they are black. This is important because a lot of the motherboards out there are designed to work with USB 2.0 in order to get the BIOS to flash properly. Some systems, this isn't a concern, but this right here is the first place I would check. Next, it has to be less than 32 gigs in size. That could be two, that could be eight, 16, 32, any combination thereof, but it has to be less than 32 gigs in order for it to be recognized by most BIOSes. It has to be formatted in what is called FAT32. Now, if you don't know how to format a USB drive, it is a relatively easy process. On any computer that you have access to, bring up this PC and then plug in the USB drive. You can see right here, this is my USB. If I right click, I can click Format. Right here is FAT32. This is the default. A lot of the times you might see NTFS, that's a newer standard than FAT32. This is what Windows uses today, essentially. But we don't want that. We want FAT32, put whatever label you want, allocation size that you want, doesn't matter. I do do a quick format and then click start. That will format the drive and get it ready for you to be able to basically install the BIOS. Lastly, you need to make sure that the BIOS file you have is located in the parent root folder of this thumb drive. What does that mean? Well, a lot of the times when you download a BIOS file, it's gonna look like this. So if we double click, you can see that this is an extractable zip file. So that's what we're gonna do. Compress folder tools, extract all. And if you have this checked, it'll bring it right up for you. Bam. ASUS and several of the other manufacturers are very particular when it comes to the naming convention that the BIOS is going to recognize. ASUS includes this BIOS renamer tool. Not all of them include this. Check with your specific motherboard manufacturer to see if this is even necessary. If it is, if you double click on it, it will change the name for you and tell you, hey, we're done. So pressing any key closes it out. And here is our BIOS file for this Crosshair Hero 8. So I'm gonna copy, that's simply Control C, and I'm gonna go back over here to my USB drive. Here I am. And I'm gonna paste this into this drive. It's going to copy things over, and you see I'm at E. So if I click here, it tells me slash E. That's what I mean by the parent or the root folder. The other thing I do with my BIOS files is I label my previous one old. So I always save a version of my BIOS that I was last installing. So I will download the new BIOS, come to my thumb drive and rename the one that is already on there, like this one. I would rename that to dot old so that I had a copy of the previous BIOS and then I have a copy of the new BIOS and I can install both of those pretty easily just in case something goes wrong with the actual BIOS update itself if I run into problems. Once you have the USB stick ready, you're going to restart your machine with the stick in place and you're going to boot into the BIOS. That's F2, F12, or the DEL, Dell key, delete key. You will be met with a screen that's somewhat like this. And on the MSI motherboard, you have the ability to adjust this with the M flash tool. Now this is the MSI flash tool. This is going to be different names in different motherboards, but that's what we're gonna use. 
This method is a destructive method. And when you hear all of the warning stories about flashing a BIOS, this is why, because it deletes the BIOS and then it reinstalls the BIOS. So this time we're going to restart the system. It's going to take care of itself. It's going to flash into what they call flash mode. So for MSI, flash mode is going to give us the ability to update the BIOS. So it's a special version of a BIOS updater tool that is kind of built into the motherboard. You're presented with your file structure and you can see my drive is number one. And then my file for this motherboard is right there. So we double click and that's actually going to kick off the BIOS process itself. And now you're met with a warning that's explaining a little bit about a Celeron processor issue. This is just a warning. Say, yes, I want to update this. And this is what MSI shows you during this update. Now, here is the critical part. Don't turn this off. Don't unplug it. Don't let the power go out. Never update your BIOS if there's a storm, lightning, thunder, snow, ice. If there's anything going on outside that provides a slight chance that you might lose power, don't update your BIOS. If you have access to an uninterrupted power source, a UPS, this is a great opportunity to plug it in and make sure that this thing is going to be rock solid and you're not going to lose power. Once the BIOS is updated, it will reset the system. If you have a newer kind of motherboard, you have access to the flashback ability. Now, the flashback ability is awesome. It provides a fail safe state that if the BIOS update fails, it flashes back to the previous good one and it just works. You don't need a CPU in place in order to do this either, which makes it awesome. If you've got a new CPU and a slightly older motherboard, this is how you can update it and get things working. All you have to do is take the USB drive and then insert it into the BIOS port as labeled on your motherboard. Press and hold the BIOS button for about five seconds it should start flashing. Additionally, the USB drive should start flashing. If it flashes for about five seconds and turns solid, something has gone wrong, and I'm willing to bet it is that USB drive that you were trying to use. If it continues to flash for more than five seconds, probably in a good state. It's gonna to continue to flash, it's gonna to continue to update the BIOS at that point. Once it turns off, you're ready to go. You can restart the machine if necessary, but a lot of the times the flashback process will automatically restart it for you. Now, in both instances, the system will restart. The BIOS itself will be reverted back to a factory default kind of a state. I am the Graying Tech, a gaming insider. If you are into performance gaming PC content like this, check out another one of my videos right there. Or maybe hop over to my motorcycle channel where I do ride-alongs, 360s, and reviews.